Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of uh, ED Quick Tips. Uh, my name is Frankie Parr, I'm the ED educator here at the hospital. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the use of ultrasound machine for IV placement. Today's episode is just basically we're going to talk about the use of the ultrasound machine for peripheral IV placement. Um, we're going to also talk about the basic terms around the ultrasound technology, um, talk about the structures of the vessels or other, other anatomy found in the upper extremities. Uh, I think it's important that we disclose information about the care of our machine. And lastly, we can always talk about people that come to our facility or our, our patient population, they don't always need the use of the ultrasound for the peripheral IV placement. Sometimes we just might have to simply palpate and find that vessel that way. Before we go any farther, let's talk a little bit about uh, basic care of the machine and basic setup. The machine uh, simply has the power button in the back. We will turn that on, allow for the machine to reboot appropriately. On the front of the machine, you'll notice two knobs. Those knobs are the only things that you will notice before the machine actually powers on. The rest of the machine is actually touch screen. These two knobs control two different settings on it. The game feature, which we will show a little bit farther in this video, and the depth. This machine also has a couple different areas where we put different things. The first thing to notice is the ultrasound gel. This gel is only used to inspect the vessel. You cannot use this gel to um, insert a angel cath. We also like to keep the gray top wipes in the back of the machine for the purpose of cleaning. The machine should be clean after each and single use. Uh, please leave the machine as you found it. The machine also has a drawer. In this drawer, you will find maybe a couple long 20s uh, and 18 gauge needles. Also, you will find your typical normal saline flush, but the most important thing in this drawer is the sterile ultrasound gel that should be used for the IV placement. This ultrasound gel here, it's not sterile, it's multiple use. This gel is single use, and this one should be, should be used in every single time. Also in the machine, we have a couple of different features. We found the uh, vascular probe. It's an L25 probe. Typically, it's pretty expensive. We're talking about about $15,000 for one pro, so be careful. Don't roll over the core over the machine. It's a typical error that we see. When I spoke to the Sunnyside representatives, they mentioned that after each use, the machine should be plugged to an electrical outlet to allow for the battery to refill, and the next person that uses the machine has a full battery. Based on research, the ED nurse should have at least a year experience with traditional IV starts before moving to the ultrasound machine for peripheral IV placement. You may need those skills during an acute setting in the trauma room or when the event of the machine is being used by someone else. Some basic terms that we use along the ultrasound are hypoechoic, hyperechoic, and honeycomb shape uh, structures along the upper extremity. Those honeycomb structures are more than likely nerve bundles. Putting a sharp object through those nerve bundles will incur pain to your patient. Uh, and we would like to avoid that. The hypoechoic structures appear black in the screen and those are the vessels that we want to go for. The hyperechoic vessels or hyperechoic structures appear gray to white on the screen and you want to stay away from those because more than likely it's clotted blood or other structures that we want to stay away from. Now we would like to welcome Ashley. She's playing the role as our patient. We have inspected her arm, we have palpated as much as we can. And we decided to bring the ultrasound into play because we can't find anything obvious with her upper extremity. First, let's talk about the placement of the tourniquet. And traditionally, we typically place the tourniquet a little bit lower. For the ultrasound, we need to go a little bit higher. Try to use the gown on the patient to prevent from pinching their skin. I think they like that. Don't have to go necessarily a little bit tighter or not. I think it's important to talk about positioning of the machine. It's really specific only to you, uh, what are you whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, for my preference, I like to have the machine in the same angle as my vision, so I don't have to move my head back and forth. For purposes of this video, I'm going to keep the machine on this side of Ashley. Typically, I like it across the room to keep my eye on the same level as the screen. Apply the uh, multiple use gel for inspection of the upper extremity. And start from the bottom or more distal part of the upper extremity and work your way top, just like you learn in nursing school. When I first started using the machine, I started using the most obvious structures, your veins and the AC space. As I got better and became more experienced in the machine, I learned that the cephalic vein, which is in the same side as your thumb or your radial artery, 
It's the straightest vessel on the upper extremity. Work your way up to the top. If you can't locate anything in the cephalic area, find your brachial vein. And sometimes you can track that down and find an area where you can cannulate the whole vessel. If you notice, it's a little bit dark. I want to introduce you to the knob that is known as gain. If you turn this knob to the right, it just kind of gains a little bit more of a brightness on the screen. If you happen to find the machine and it's too bright for you, I want to introduce you to the auto gain feature. It'll kind of bring you back to the default settings where it's a little bit darker. Also, I want you to be aware of this other knob that controls the depth. Typically, we like to, we like to keep it 2.2 because if you increase that number, you can see how the vascular probe shows you something that is way deeper and we will never reach for. Typically, we like to teach that we don't want to move past 2.2 and do not stick anything past the third knob or 1.5 inches below the surface of the upper extremity. As far as vein structure, I like to point out the cephalic is my favorite. We have the medium cubital vein, uh, we have the brachial vein, and then up here you have your basilic vein. Cephalic vein also continues on this side of the arm. Don't forget about that one, it's pretty straight. To help with identification of the structures in the upper extremity, the machine has a specific feature. We'll need to talk about um, the act of, comp the act of compressing. If, it comp if it's easily collapsible, as this, it's considered a vein. If you collapse and you can still see it pulsate, we consider that an artery. The machine has a different feature that you can use. You can activate it by simply hitting the C or the color, and you can see how it helps you generate a pulsating screen. If we move over to the basilic vein, when we compress it, you can see a constant flow of blue. It's important that you understand that this dot on the screen correlates with the dot on your probe. And it should be on the same side as your machine. As always, we start at the bottom, but for teaching purposes, now we're here. Now that we find our desire vessel, it's important that you understand that uh, positioning the machine will help your success of IV starts. I like to keep my head as steady as possible, so I keep the machine in the same angle or visual fill as my vessel or my target. We identify our vessel, let's slow things down and kind of recap what we learned so far. Multi-use gel only used for panning and exploring the upper extremity. We learned that this is single use and it's a sterile, and this is what we should use once we decide to uh, insert the angiocath. You have your regular IV star kit, you have your flush extension set, thank God these are back, and you have a long 20 gauge needle. It's approximately about one and three quarters uh, long. And now that our equipment's ready, we need to apply our sterile ultrasound gel to the probe, clean the site, in a circular motion with the chlorhexidine prep. Place your probe back in the area where you want to um, locate your target. Make sure you're comfortable in your positioning. I found my target. For teaching purposes, watch the needle enter the vessel. Look for blood return and advance the angiocath carefully. Pause for a second. Drop the probe. At this point you will get some blood samples if needed. If not, pop your tourniquet. Apply pressure distally and put your extension set onto the catheter. Your extension is attached. Draw back to confirm placement, flush, watch your patient for signs of pain, no pain noted, easy flushing, remove your flush, wipe the excess ultrasound gel, hold the angiocath in place, apply the skin protectant, thank you for holding. Place your stat lock, fill the click, 
Pulled the pieces. Applied your tag there. And secure the extension as your preference. Now that I've eased place, uh, we gotta talk about the machine care. We can touch on it briefly. Your cloth should be placed in the back of that machine. Remove the cloth. And wipe any blood or any type of excess gel off the probe cover. Make sure your core is clean as well. And you simply place it back in the machine. Thanks for watching this episode of Quick Tips. As always, if you have any questions, we're here to help.